A researcher is examining the effective dose and lethal dose of an unknown medication. Initial results yield the data shown below. Which of the following drugs represents the unknown medication if the value marked by point B were to theoretically decrease? Now, I know that there's a, an infographic here, a, a little chart, if you will, a graph. So why don't you pause the video, review that, and then attempt to make a guess on this question before I reveal the correct answer on the next slide. All right, if you need some more time, pause the video now because I'm about to give you the answer. The correct answer in this practice question is choice B, theophylline. Now, let's look at what exactly we needed to identify in the infographic here in order to get this question right. So we're looking at a couple things here, point A, point B, and point C. And in order to get this question right, you have to be able to identify what you're looking at on these graphs of the patients who respond up on the y-axis versus the drug concentration on the x-axis. And if you haven't figured it out already, what, what we're looking at here is the therapeutic index. So the red line, which was point A, represents the therapeutic index. The green line, which was point C, represents the effective dose in 50% of the population. And the blue line, which was represented by point B, represents the lethal dose in 50% of the population. So these are very, very important metrics to be able to infer when you see them on a graph. And what you need to do in order to get this question right is to figure out how the therapeutic index will change depending on which direction either one of these curves move. So the question says that if point B, which again is that blue line, were to decrease, what would, what would that represent drug-wise? And recall that in, in order to get this question, you need to know what the therapeutic index is equal to. The therapeutic index is equal to the LD50 divided by the ED50, right? So it's looking at a comparison of how effective is the drug versus how lethal is the drug. Depending on what that index is, it's very predictive about the safety profile. So in this practice question, if the LD50 or point B were to decrease and slide to the left, you're decreasing your LD50, which means you're decreasing your therapeutic index. And this should make sense if you think about what you're saying. By decreasing the LD50 and sliding that blue line to the left, you're saying that a lower drug concentration is required to be lethal in 50% of the population. And that's obviously not a good thing. We want that LD50 to be really, really high, which means a super high drug concentration is required for the drug to be lethal in 50% of the population. So by sliding point B to the left and thereby decreasing it, which is what the question is telling you, it's then asking you to infer what medication is the unknown medication if that blue line or point B were to decrease. So by looking at these answer choices, what we see are four particularly safe medications and one with a narrow therapeutic index. And you need to know the drugs that have extremely narrow therapeutic indexes, or indices, I should say. And those four drugs are theophylline, digoxin, warfarin, and lithium. Now, my mnemonic for remembering this is that these drugs are wildly lethal, TDWL. These drugs are wildly lethal, T for theophylline, D for digoxin, W for warfarin, and L for lithium. Now, let's pretend for a second that you weren't sure or you didn't know that theophylline had a narrow therapeutic index and you didn't know that when the LD50 were, were to theoretically decrease that we'd be talking about one of these four drugs. Is there a way that you could have worked backwards and used the high yield thinking that I'm trying to instill in you in this video series to get the question right? And the answer is yes. If you were to look at choices A, B, C, D, and E, one way to think about this is what are the adverse effects of all of these drugs? And chances are that if there's a lot of adverse effects, not always, but usually that talks somewhat about the therapeutic index because more toxicity is happening at lower doses and therefore in clinical trials, we've been able to identify there are a lot of side effects, which means that people are experiencing those side effects at arguably lower drug concentrations. 
Now, obviously, I'm taking some liberties by making that statement, but let's just approach the question this way. If you look at the other four medications and list out their side effects, one could argue that these are not very severe and that there just aren't a lot of side effects. And then if you were to compare these four drugs to theophylline, you would see that theophylline carries a much higher adverse effect burden. So propanolol causes dizziness and fatigue. Sertraline causes headache, GI upset, and sexual dysfunction. Diphenhydramine causes fatigue and sedation. And penicillin causes hypersensitivity reactions, Coombs positive hemolysis, and interstitial nephritis. Now, you might look at penicillin, for example, and be like, hmm, those seem like pretty severe adverse effects. Maybe the therapeutic index is narrow. And what I'd argue to you is then to think about the sheer number of patients in real life who are on these medications. So penicillin is the prototypical antibiotic, and we know that millions of people have taken it, and therefore it's probably not going to have a narrow therapeutic index. Diphenhydramine you can get over the counter. That's Benadryl. Doesn't have a narrow therapeutic index or it wouldn't be over the counter. Sertraline is one of the most widely prescribed SSRIs, and not only that, but SSRIs in general are incredibly safe. And lastly, propanolol is one of the most widely used medications. So if we compare the adverse effects of these medications and the theoretical use of these medications in the public, which some of you may not know, and that's fine, but if we compare those things to theophylline, which has major adverse effects of neuro and cardiotoxicity, it stands to reason that there's something about these four medications that are different than theophylline. So if we go back to our, our practice question here, you could have theoretically not known a damn thing about the therapeutic index and just looked at A, B, C, D, and E and asked yourself, which of these medications is different from the rest? Now that said, what I want to leave you with is that obviously the easiest way to get a question like this correct is to know about the therapeutic index, to know where the ED50 and the LD50 fall on these curves, and lastly, to know the four drugs with the narrow therapeutic index. Again, theophylline, digoxin, warfarin, and lithium. These drugs are wildly lethal. They have narrow therapeutic indices, which means that their use is reserved for patients that truly, truly need them. And once those patients are on these medications, they're monitored very closely. So I hope that this question was useful to you guys. Again, my goal is not necessarily to teach you new content, but to help you think about other ways to approach questions where you only know a little bit about what the question is asking. Hope that this was useful to you and stay tuned for more practice question videos.